I'm Danielle and I'm Compliance Director with Mortgage Dashboard and today we're going to look at the Ability to Repay Requirements. The CFPB issued the Ability to Repay Requirements and they went into effect this past January and in response Mortgage Dashboard implemented a Debts, Income and Assets Worksheet. You can access this worksheet on the 1003 page 2 in Dashboard and by clicking the button you can go to the worksheet itself. There are three tabs associated with the worksheet, debts, incomes, and assets. On the debts page, the very top shows the borrower's income, and this actually feeds from the income tab, so we're gonna skip that for now. The second portion of the screen is the primary residence, and it shows the, the principal and interest and the escrows that are associated with that mortgage. If this is a primary residence transaction, you probably don't need to complete the supporting documentation for this section. But for a second home or investment property, you will need to complete this section to show anyone who looks at the file after you how you calculated this information. So in this example, we had a statement from the previous mortgage company, and we have the date of that statement so that we know how, what the principal and interest is currently and how the escrows are calculated today. The next section of the worksheet shows additional debts and goes on to show the credit report date and the credit reference number and then goes on to debts not listed on the credit report. So if your borrower happens to have alimony, child support, or other debts that don't show on their credit report, the information will show here and you can show the supporting documentation for that debt. So if for alimony or child support, you might list the divorce decree and the date of that divorce decree. And at the bottom of the page, there's a note section. With all loan files when qualifying, it's important to show how you calculated and qualified the borrower, and this note section supports that. Next is the income tab. Here for the borrower, you can show their monthly wage income and then any variable or other income. In the first section, the monthly wage earnings, you can input your borrower's base rate of pay so in this example, our borrower is paid bi-monthly and receives $3,000 bi-monthly. You can input your income calculation. So for this example, $3,000 times 24 divided by 12, and then your qualifying income for that borrower. So in this example, $6,000. If your borrower has variable wage income, such as bonus income, commissions, overtime, or other income that they receive regularly and wish to use to qualify, you would input that information in this section. You would put the year-to-date amount, followed by the previous year and the year before that. You would enter the, the number of months to average, and then the system will calculate what the qualifying income. So in the example here, the borrower is receiving $100 in other income. Perhaps it's alimony or child support. So they've received $300 so far this year, and for the two prior years, they received $1,200 for the year. Dividing that by 27, you have $100 a month. And all of this comes down to calculate that the borrower receives $6,100 a month based on your prior input. If your borrower is self-employed, you can include that information here and your number of months to average, and it will calculate this borrower's self-employed qualifying income. There's a note section, so you can put information in on the pay stubs and other documentation you use to support the income crop calculation. And you can repeat the same information for borrower two. And finally, the assets tab. This tab supports all the assets the borrower used to qualify and allows us to put the supporting documentation for those assets. So for example, for the checking account, you could put in the bank statement, the number of months that you receive and the bank that they're from and the account number and the balance will carry over from earlier input and mortgage dashboard. You could do this for certificates of deposits, multiple checking accounts, your earnest money deposit, any trust or mutual funds, retirement accounts. You can input the supporting documentation so that somebody looking at the file after you will know exactly how you calculated that information. And just like with the prior screens, there's a notes section so that you can put in any notes that fully tell the story of how the loan was qualified. Once you've made all this input, you are able to print the form and put it in your loan file so that it's there for anyone looking at the file after you. To do that, just click Forms, Print Custom Doc Set, 
processing, and then ATR, debts and incomes asset worksheet. Generate the file and now you can put it in your loan file. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Cody Miles at Mortgage Dashboard and you can reach him at cody at mortgage dashboard.com. Thanks.